Brian Bloomberg says electric cars have passed a tipping point in 23 countries now. Now, I think they consider a tipping point of 5% looking at uh, technological adoption curves uh, of yeah. different things like color TVs and cell phones. And basically, it goes very slow and at a gradual graph increase on your graph chart. And then it, when you hit 5% or so, it starts to really go up like an S. And then when it hits 90, like it has in uh, in uh, Norway, then it levels off again. And that's the other, the top part of the S on the right side of the graph. So they've increased it to 23 countries right now. And they say the fast part of the technology adoption curve is happening now with electric vehicles, including, um, according to their Bloomberg Green analysis of adoption rates around the world, a critical tipping point is 5% of new car sales uh, powered only by electricity. So we're not talking about plug-in hybrids here. We're talking about full electric vehicles, no gas tank. The newcomers, Canada, Australia, Spain. And by the way, we have listeners in Australia and Spain. And no one ever writes us from there. Maybe Australia. Please do. Spain. I can think of some other countries. <laughs> Denmark, uh, Germany, uh, Japan now. We have people in Japan listening and India. So drop us a line just to say hi. If all you do is say hi. Yeah, and of course, the, the forest fire smoke from Canada has reached as far as Spain. So if anyone from Spain has been a victim of our forest fire smoke, right please it, let us know. Write us to complain. So yeah, all those countries, um, you know... U.S. and China and most of uh, uh, Western Europe are already there, even though, you know, I guess we're surpassing the U.S. in some ways in Canada. The trajectory laid out by these early adopters shows how EVs can surge from 5% to 25% of new car sales in just four years. So now once you hit the 5%, you can expect four years later to be up around one in four vehicles sold. So I think Canada, for example, hit that. I think in January or February 2022, so in 2026, you can expect one in four. And I think they're, they might hit that one in four threshold in British Columbia, the province on the West Coast this year. Uh, it's one of those West Coast things where EV adoption is supported and encouraged and uh, embraced to the point yeah. that we're... Imagine the peer pressure to buy an electric car if you live in Vancouver, uh, it must be huge. Yeah, but you get to the point where your neighbor has one. So if you have doubts or preconceptions or misconceptions, I mean, those get erased when, you know, you're your neighbor on either side. And by the way, my neighbor next door has EVs on either side of her. Um, wow. I'm one of them, obviously, because I'm on the one side with two EVs and the person moved in with a Tesla on the other side of her. So she's surrounded by Teslas and her late husband yeah. used to have the, uh, a Corvette, and I used to smell his fumes while he revved his engine in the driveway. <laughs> so once the universal challenges of car costs um, become, you know, no longer a problem and charger availability and driver skepticism, um, if these things are solved for the few, the masses soon follow Bloomberg rights. And I tend to agree with that. And I think a lot of people don't realize that that uh, once you reach a certain point, things really slide off the scales here. Uh, U.S. EV sales are rising faster, 42% in the second quarter compared to the same period a year ago, but haven't quite matched the explosive trajectory of other countries that have crossed over. And that could change as Tesla, the world's biggest EV maker, prepares to launch his Cybertruck pickup, uh, perhaps any day now. Or There's an event, right? They've, they've sent out... Yeah, I think there's a date now coming up in the next week or two. So uh, it's finally going to happen. Well, that should be interesting uh, to see how that rolls out. I know the front is a bit of a disappointment. It's a bit small compared to some, but it's maybe more practical. We'll have to see. Uh, yeah, so we got lots more EVs coming out, as you know, as we talk about on the show. Lots, lots of, uh, you know, including models that are icons like the Chevy Blazer and Silverado and Ford Explorer, and of course the F-150, Jeep Wrangler, Ram 1500. Um, yeah, lots of things coming. So that's good news, and we'll keep an eye on it. No, and, and I wasn't on my list, but um, there's another $15 billion from the Biden administration in the U.S. for remaking car factories. So it's, it's an even further subsidy for the U.S. automakers to get on board with EVs. 
um, perhaps because they've realized you know how expensive it is going to be and it's going to be a tough transition for them as they start to lose money on their gas cars uh, which no one's going to be buying soon ish and how much of that will toyota get i mean they're probably still slowing down and reticent and they don't have their they don't have the cars to make i mean they're developing the cars they claim they're developing the cars but i don't know i i predict that you know, t uh, Toyota's already gotten money from the Japanese government. They are the biggest, you know, you know they practically run Japan, Toyota. They're, they're the yeah. president of all the auto company associations, so they kind of guide the auto industry there. And the auto industry, of course, is a big chunk of the uh, economy there. And if, you know, they're screwed, then Japan is screwed. And our listeners in Japan may not like that. So, hello, Japan. Send us an email, Clean Energy Show Gmail. Com. Show.